This is section 4.3, how derivatives affect the shape of a graph, our third and final content objective, which is we're going to apply everything we did in objective 2 and objective 1 to position, velocity, and acceleration curves. So we're going to be describing the motion of a particle within the context of that increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. So before we can do that, we need to recall that position tells where an object is, Velocity tells you how an object is moving, and acceleration tells you the push. And lastly, we need to remember that speed is actually the absolute value of the velocity, and that a particle will speed up if both the acceleration and the velocity have the same sign, whereas it will slow down if they have opposite signs. We have one example for these notes, and we're going to do it in its entirety. So here our first step is we want to write down the domain. And the domain is given to us as all t's that were greater than or equal to zero. The second step is we want to find the velocity and acceleration. So that means we're looking at the derivative and the second derivative. Well, the first derivative is our velocity, and our second derivative is the acceleration. So that first derivative is going to be a 6t squared minus a 28t plus a 22 and our second derivative will be a 12t minus a 28. With both of these we need to determine when they equal 0 and undefined. To do that we're going to want to factor. So we can see here that a 2 is in common and then we can factor again and get a 3t minus 11 and a t minus a 1. And on this one we can factor out a 2 and get a 6t minus a 14. So if we solve both of these for when they're 0 or undefined, we can see that this one will be 0 when t is 1 or 11 thirds, and it's never undefined. This one will be 0 when t is 7 thirds and it will never be undefined. So our next step, step 4, is to graph sign charts for each of these derivatives. Only this time we're going to be labeling them as v prime, or excuse me, as v and a. So we have our velocity and we have our acceleration. Both of them on the sign charts we want to put the domains which means t is greater than 0, and then we want to put the critical points and the zeros and undefines for each. So on the velocity we had a 1 whose slope was 0, and we had an 11 thirds whose slope was also 0. And on the acceleration curve I had a 0 at 7 thirds, which is going to be larger than 1 and smaller than 11 thirds. In between 0 and 1, say at a half, we can plug a half in and see that this will be negative and this will be negative, so the overall result will be positive. In between 1 and 11 thirds, say at 2, this will be negative and this will be positive, so we'll get a negative output. And then after 11 thirds, both of these will be positive. If we look at the acceleration curve now, prior to 7 thirds, say at 1, we can see that this will be negative, and after 7 thirds we can see that this will be positive. Step 6 is we want to sketch the position curve. So the position curve is going to start at some point when time is 0, and it's going to rise on a frown until 1, and then it'll start to fall on that frown. So we're going to be rising and frowning until 7 thirds, and then we start to smile even though we're still falling. So there we had our inflection point, and then we're going to, once we hit that 11 thirds, we're going to bottom out and then start to increase. So here's a sketch of our position curve. With step 7 and 8, we're looking for the outputs at each of those critical values. So we have the output at 1, which turns out to be 5, and we have our output at 11 thirds, which turns out to be a negative 377 over 27. We can do the same thing with the inflection point and see the output at 7 thirds 
is going to be a negative 121 over 27. So if we want to put that on our picture, we can see here that we had the point 0 comma negative 5. That's going to be a local min. Then up here at 1, we had an output of 5. That's a local max. Then we have an inflection point at 7 thirds, negative 121 over 27. And then we have a local min at 11 thirds and negative 377 over 27. So now we want to describe the motion of the particle and this is where it's going to be a little different than what we've done in the past. Instead of talking about when f increases or decreases, we can talk about when the particle moves to the right, moves to the left, or stops. So the particle moves right on the interval from 0 until 1 and then again from 11 thirds to infinity because the velocity is positive. We can say the particle moves left on the interval from 1 to 11 thirds because v is less than 0. We can say the particle stops at t equals 1 and t equals 11 thirds because v is 0. And then we can talk about max and min positions. So the max position is 5 at, I guess we should say the local max position is 5 at t equals 1 because s of t is continuous and v of t changed from positive to negative and the local min position is negative 377 over 27 at t equals 11 thirds because s of t is continuous and v of t changed from negative to positive. You'll find with particle motion problems that they don't ever really ask about concavity. Instead they're going to ask about whether the particle is speeding up or slowing down. So we would say the particle speeds up and the particle slows down. And how we're going to recognize it is by looking at when the velocity and the acceleration have the same sign and when they have opposing signs. So looking here we can see that we've got opposing signs on that interval from 0 to 1. So we can say that we're going to be slowing down from 0 to 1. And then we again get opposing signs from 7 thirds to 11 thirds. By contrast, we're going to be speeding up when the signs of both the velocity and the acceleration are the same. So that's going to happen from 1 to 7 thirds and then again from 11 thirds to infinity. And the reasoning for both of these has to do with the signs of acceleration and velocity. So we speed up because v and a have the same sign and they slow down because v and a have opposite signs. So now I'd like you to try your two notes web exam problems and describe what you see on the position curve to indicate that the object is speeding up as opposed to slowing down. And what would you see on the velocity curve to indicate that an object is speeding up as opposed to slowing down? Because again, we need to start thinking about those pictures of the graphs because those will be variations in the types of questions that you might be asked.